they are distracting the American person. A lot of people don't know they're being distracted. We have to understand how propaganda works. Now, we know that the central banks around the world, the U.S. government, most of these central banks and governments, they're intertwined. And we see that they're continually out there working in tandem to make us believe that the economies are doing well, everything is fine, and if we keep going on like this, it will just all work out. I mean, they've been saying this about Greece for quite a while right now, and they have been in so much debt, things have been so bad there, they, can, they continually implement austerity on the people, they keep cutting programs, they keep taking on more debt, and the problem never really goes away. Actually, it gets worse because that's what central banks do. Now, when we look at Greece, we see the IMF and the Eurozone. Well, they're threatening to walk out on Greece over the debt relief because they feel and they think that Greece hasn't done enough. We haven't purchased enough of your assets. You need to put more of your assets on sale. You haven't implemented enough austerity on the people. You need to implement more austerity. And the Greek government is out there saying that we met our obligations. We've made the necessary cuts, and the bankers always want more. And this is what we're seeing here in the United States. What we're seeing right now is this gigantic illusion of the economy doing well. And they keep making stories up of, oh, we're going to hit escape velocity. Things are going to get better. We're raising the rates slowly to help the economy. No, they're not. They're doing everything they possibly can to destroy the economy. They don't want to help it whatsoever. Why do they want to destroy it? Well, at this point in time, they realize that the entire economy is breaking down. I believe they already hit the trigger point as they're raising the rates, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But what we're seeing, and we're going to be talking about the auto loan market once again, is that the auto loan market is actually doing the same thing as the home loan market during the 2008 crisis now for months we've been talking about the doomed auto bubble in the US and in recent weeks there's been a growing concern that consumers auto dealers banks have been going beyond simply relaxing underwriting standards and have been instead been forced to commit yes outright fraud in order to attract more and more individuals to write these auto loans. Now, a UBS strategist, Matthew Mish, says something is definitely going on under the hood. It's not just smoke and mirrors anymore. The evidence is growing. First, the explosion of te technology makes gaining access to information to improve credit scores very simple. Internet searches for credit score are at a record level. Second, our survey finds 21% of auto loan borrowers admitted to some form of inaccuracy in their loan applications. Third, there's a growing concern reported among auto lenders around fraud, which is the extreme case of this behavior. More concerning is that the trend may be systemic as 29% of other consumer loans, student loans, credit cards, acknowledge some form of inaccuracy in their applications. Now, the fraud rates on auto loan applications are currently reaching levels seen in the mortgage market back in 2009. Borrow fraud in the U.S., auto loans is surging, and yeah, they may approach levels seen in the mortgages during the last decades of the housing bubble. What are we seeing right now? They've moved what they did in the housing market to the auto loan sector. And they're doing the same exact thing. This, ex this explains why the delinquencies are surging right now. Didn't we see delinquencies surging in the home loan mortgage market during the crisis of 2008? Yes! We're seeing the same thing happening right now. Again, is the auto loan market going to cause it? No, it's going to be the needle that pops the bubble and maybe just one of the needles because we see a lot of other things happening. Now, we talked about how the Fed is raising rates and they were raising rates back in 2005, 2006, 2007 and they started to lower them because they triggered that point where the economy started to break apart. 
And we know the economy is very weak right now. We know it has never recovered. We know from all the facts and everything that we've been looking at, retail and how all the stores are being closed and how people are being laid off, we know that the economy is not strong at all. We know the numbers are completely manipulated. And what we're seeing right now is that St. Louis Fed, Bullard, he's saying that maybe we shouldn't move the rates up anymore because what we're seeing right now is an adverse reaction to the interest rates as we continually increase them hmm now this makes you think what he's saying is maybe we should reduce the interest rates because we already triggered that point where the economy now is just coming down and it doesn't matter if the interest rates move up anymore because it's already started so what this means is that the economy right now is already rolling over and it doesn't matter if they raise the interest rates anymore it doesn't matter what they really do all they need to do is keep the stock market up and he came out and he made this announcement and the stock market shot up once again and we can see this is what they really want to do now we know that this is completely manipulated but he wanted to give the news and give it out to the public to show that yes this is what we're going to do and he's hinting about QE once again and of course those individuals look at this and say okay this is going to be great we're going to make even more money and the market went up now we can see that there are others like George Soros who understands that this economy is not going to last much longer the way it is and we know George Soros he has insider connections he knows exactly what's going on he doesn't want Trump as president he's been trying everything he possibly can to get him out of office and we know eventually what's going to happen if everything that the deep state is doing can't and they can't get Trump out of the office well they have a couple of options left collapse the economy before he does or assassinate him if everything else doesn't work and George Soros right now, and this is according to Forbes and CNBC, he is betting against the U.S. stock market, and he's gone big. Now, his two plays, betting on a major downturn, have a notional or potential value of $764 billion. The plan is to create a financial apocalypse to basically bring down Trump and have everything in financial ruin and this is what the central bankers are looking to do they want to keep Trump very busy while they bring down the economy and at that point he'll be putting out fires left and right because at that point the central banks would own the narrative they will explain why it came down and how they're going to improve it where they stay in charge while the economy is down and reeling well Trump is going to be very busy putting out fires and they're going to point the finger at him and we can see right now that Soros right now he has two primary plays against large caps via the S&P 500 and small caps via the Russell 2000 and we see right now that he understands what is going on here he's part of the insider crowd He's part of the system, and I'm talking about the deep state system. And these plays that he has right now are through his family office, Soros Fund Management. Now, we need to understand that Trump at this point, he is working with many other countries to devise this plan that will help the United States after the collapse, not during this period right now everything that he's doing right now it will not work in this model everything needs to be reset everything needs to be washed away just like his businesses when they are failing there's too much debt not enough revenue coming in you got to get rid of the debt you got to get rid of the problem the problem is the central bank the problem is the deep state and the only way to do this is to cut off their funding so he's working with many countries Russia, China, North Korea, Philippines, the Asian countries, and many others to work 
on this entire plan because the United States is going to need trade with other countries because the dollar will no longer be the reserve currency of the world. The way it works now is that countries hold the dollar because they needed to purchase oil and when they go ahead and they use the dollar, well, the U.S. sends them dollars, they bring back goods and they need to keep those dollars in reserves to pay for the oil. Once the dollar is no longer the reserve currency, we're going to have to trade with these countries. It's going to be a completely different ball game. And we can see right now, this is what he's been planning on. Now, there's many different levels and many things that he has to do ahead of time. Because he just can't say, okay, collapse, we're ready to go. So everything that he's doing right now, and we're going to go through all of this, is, is he, he's preparing for the collapse and shifting us to this entirely new model. And this model is not going to include the globalists. It's not going to include the deep state. It's not going to include the private central bank. Now, does the deep state want this to happen? Are they going to let it happen? No. This is why we see what is going on out there now, and they're continually pushing their agenda to get him out of office. They're using distraction. They're using propaganda because they know that if he succeeds, they're done for. So it's a race against time. Now, one thing is for sure, this economy is going to be completely different. We're going to go through a transition period. You can call it a collapse, transition, however you want to call it. But during this period of time, it's going to be a rough period of time because things are going to be chaotic. People are not going to understand what is going on and people are not going to be prepared for it. This is why we've been talking about all of this. This is why we've been tracking everything. This is why we've been looking at everything. It's not to scare you. It's not to use fear mongering. It's to prepare you for what is coming. If I told you there's a hurricane coming and it'll be here in three days, well, I would tell you, get water, get batteries, get supplies, because it is coming. Now you can believe me or not, it doesn't make a difference because I will be prepared. Other people will be prepared. And when the storm hits, it'll be too late. You'll just sit there, the storm will hit, your electric will go out, there'll be no fresh water, you won't be able to get food, and you will be stuck. And at that point, if you think, well, I'm just going to run out and get that stuff now, good luck with that. It's going to be very, very difficult. And this is to get people ready and prepared for what is coming. This is what this is all about. And you can take it either way. I mean, if you don't believe it, you don't have to listen. That's your choice. I mean, let's go back to 2008 or prior to 2008. You know all those individuals that were looking at the subprime securities and looking inside the subprime securities saying something doesn't make sense because most of these are rated AAA, but we have defaulting loans in them, subprime individuals. Some people own three, four houses with no checks. How could this possibly be? This doesn't make sense. Now, a lot of people laughed at them. They didn't believe them. They thought they were crazy. And what happened was, it was, did it happen the next day? No. Did it happen the next year? No. It happened sometime later when everything that they were talking about, everything they researched came true. And all those people that were laughing, well, they were out of jobs. They lost their life savings. They lost their home. And those people made billions and billions of dollars because they understood. Now, again, we do have manipulation. The central bankers do have a way of keeping everything afloat until they want to bring it down. And these individuals, they couldn't understand why it wasn't collapsing sooner. It made no sense to them. Well, that was because the central bank was controlling everything just like they're doing today. But you know one thing is for sure because we've been looking at the research. Actually, when we look at like retail, if you go back two, three years, people said it was online sales. People said it was the snow. Well, the snow doesn't make 8,000 stores close down. It doesn't create 50 bankruptcies. Online sales, which is only 8% or so of total retail sales, that doesn't destroy retail. People not working home loan market during the 2008 crisis. Now, for months, we've been talking about the doomed auto bubble in the U.S. And in recent weeks, 
there's been a growing concern that consumers, auto dealers, banks, have been going beyond simply relaxing underwriting standards and have been instead been forced to commit, yes, outright fraud in order to attract more and more individuals to write these auto loans. Now, a UBS strategist, Matthew Mish, says something is definitely going on under the hood. It's not just smoke and mirrors anymore. The evidence is growing. First, the explosion of technology technology of the economy doing well and they keep making stories up of oh we're gonna hit escape velocity things are going to get better we're raising the rates slowly to help the economy no they're not they're doing everything they possibly can to destroy the economy they don't want to help it whatsoever why do they want to destroy it well at this point in time they realize that the entire economy is breaking down I believe they already hit the trigger point as they're raising the rates, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But what we're seeing, and we're going to be talking about the auto loan market once again, is that the auto loan market is actually doing the same thing as the technology makes gaining access to information to improve credit scores very simple. Internet searches for credit score are at a record level. Second, our survey finds 21% of auto loan borrowers admitted to some form of inaccuracy in their loan applications. Third, there's a growing concern reported among auto lenders around fraud, which is the extreme case of this behavior. More concerning is that the trend may be systemic as 29% of other consumer loans, student loans, credit cards, acknowledge some form of inaccuracy in their applications. Now, the fraud rates on auto loan applications are currently reaching levels seen in the more they are distracting the American person. A lot of people don't know they're being distracted. We have to understand how propaganda works. Now, we know that the central banks around the world, the U.S. government, most of these central banks and governments, they're intertwined. And we see that they're continually out there working in tandem to make us believe that the economies are doing well everything is fine and if we keep going on like this it will just all work out I mean they've been saying this about Greece for quite a while right now and they have been in so much debt things have been so bad there they can they continually implement austerity on the people they keep cutting programs they keep taking on more debt and the problem never really goes away actually it gets worse because that's what central banks do now when we look at Greece we see the IMF in the Eurozone well they're threatening to walk out on Greece over the debt relief because they feel and they think that Greece hasn't done enough we haven't purchased enough of your assets you need to put more of your assets on sale you haven't implemented enough austerity on the people you need to implement more austerity and the Greek government is out there saying that we met our obligations We've made the necessary cuts, and the bankers always want more. And this is what we're seeing here in the United States. What we're seeing right now is this gigantic illusion.